Hello, this is Jake MD, and today we're going to talk about patient-controlled analgesia, or PCA for short. We use them in the hospital for acute pain management, as well as sometimes for chronic pain management and under other indications. So basically, the short story of what this is, is a button that you can press, which you can see here, that this little light will flash when it's available, and it will give you pain medicine through your IV. If you're an adult, usually that pain medicine is hydromorphone, although you can also use morphine, fentanyl, and other drugs. The second is used mostly in kids, and that's morphine. You can also use hydromorphone in kids, but usually the dosing is easier to stick with morphine. Um, basics on PCA pumps. Why do doctors like them, and why do patients like them? First off, on the patient side, Patients like uh, PCAs because they can get pain medicine when they need it. They don't need to wait for a nurse. They don't have to get the doctor's approval. They can just push a button and they can get some pain medicine right away. And that is incredibly convenient if you're somebody who needs pain medicine frequently, which usually someone who just had surgery, that's the case. Why doctors and nurses, for that matter, like PCAs. The first thing is because of the safety factor. The built-in inherent safety of a PCA is that only the person who has the PCA, the patient, should be using that button. And because you have to be awake in order to press the button, you should not be able to give yourself too much medication because if you fall asleep, because you're getting a big dose, you're just not going to push your button again and then that medicine is going to wear off and then you're going to wake up and feel like yourself again until you're having some more pain and then you push the button again so uh, overall they're a pretty safe way of delivering pain medications um, from a doctor's point of view and then the a doctor or a nurse can look at the pain pump it records every time you try to push the button as well as every time that you get medicine from pushing the button over a 24-hour period and it breaks it down over eight-hour time frames or even shorter if you really want to know those details and allows you to know when people are having pain what you can do to better manage that pain and kind of optimize that regimen the best you can. Now, going on, let me say what the different things that can be set on a PCA pump. So the incremental dose for adults is usually 0 0.2 milligrams of hydromorphone. And that is the amount of medicine that you get when you push the button. And the lockout interval is the amount of time between button presses that the machine won't let you get another dose. So it's the minimum amount of time that required before you're able to get another dose of medication. What the important factor of this lockout interval is, is you want to make sure that the peak effect of the medicine that you gave from the previous dose is going to be there before you can push it again. That way it stops you from stacking medicine doses because stacking is very dangerous um, since if you could have let's say um, morphine which takes 15 minutes to reach its peak effect if you would have a lockout interval of every three minutes you could give yourself five doses of medicine before you realize that or before you even reach the peak effect of that first one and you can see very easily that once all of those doses stack up that you could have a lot of trouble and have apnea, respiratory, as, um, respiratory depression leading to apnea. You could have a lot of itching, which is another side effect of um, pain medicines. And you could actually have a cardiac arrest from just not breathing enough that your heart would stop. And that's why doctors are so careful with these narcotic pain medicines. They work really well to control pain, but they're also quite dangerous. And that's why we like using these PCAs and have very specific limits on them in order to make them as safe as possible. And overall, these PCAs are very safe. Uh, standard um, incremental or the standard lockout interval for a hydromorphone PCA, which is the standard, 
uh, hydromorphone is also called dilaudid, is six minutes. And the peak effect is five to ten minutes or so. It's a little variable between people and you notice that effect well before you get the peak effect so usually you don't have problems with stacking. The other issues you don't want the interval too long because then if you do fall behind you're not able to catch back up again and that is also a problem so there's a little bit of a line that you have to draw to do that optimally um, next topic I want to talk about is continuous infusions and continuous infusions are used often in children because they're not able to mentally um, understand pushing the button when they're having pain and they link side effects with the pain medicine and they link other problems that aren't related to the pain medicine to it because it goes with the button and it makes it very hard to use these um, PCA systems and kids in institutions I've worked at and under 12 years old that's definitely not universal and could be different where you live but that's a rough idea of how old you need to be in order to coordinate the pushing of that button correctly and appropriately. Um, sometimes in adults, if people are really having difficulty sleeping and they are tolerating the pain medicine well and not using it too much either, we sometimes can do a, a continuous infusion overnight to try to help people sleep and usually it's a fairly small amount because people tend to just push that button when they're in pain and a lot of people don't have pain if they're not moving or much less and you don't want to have problems with them getting too much pain medicine at night especially because um, you might not be breathing or you just might be sleeping deeply it's hard to know if there's not someone in watching you um, but there's also safety things that we do whenever somebody is on a PCA. For example, continuous pulse oximetry to know if your oxygen levels go down. So that's just part of the game if you're going to get one of these pumps in order to keep it as safe as possible. Um, for um, non-pain medicine managed or non-pain doctor managed PCAs, there's usually a four hour limit, which basically is just a max dose that the pump will allow you to get over a four hour period. So it, most of the time this is never an issue unless if you're pushing the button every six minutes and most people don't do that because they just push it when they um, have pain. Um, the goal of a provider is to have you push that button three to four times an hour. If you're pushing it more than four times an hour, we say that you're working too hard and your pain's probably not well enough controlled, and they can increase that incremental dose to make it so you push it less often. On the other hand, if you are only pushing it once an hour, they might drop that incremental dose in order to make it so that you can't get too much medicine at once and have that stacking. For example, uh, uh, thing that I've seen is that somebody only pushes their button um, during the day maybe three times during the day and we the patient was left on that 0 0.2 milligram starting dose and then in the middle of the night they wake up and they push the button at because um, they're in a lot of pain and then they push it again because that first dose isn't completely uh, um, isn't completely working yet and needs a little bit of time to get that high level of pain under control because going from a high level of pain to a lower level of pain and controlling it is much harder than going from a low level of pain to an acceptable level of pain. So you can push that button a couple times to get to that point. If you weren't using it at all prior to that, that can make you really sleepy or make you breathe really slow and not be as awake as we'd like you to be. Um, even with this pain system. So it's not foolproof. And if somebody is barely pushing that button or you're barely pushing that button, it might be a good idea to have that dose that you get when you push the button decreased because you're less likely to have side effects like itching or nausea or those types of things as well as the respiratory depression, which is something that um, I'm acutely concerned about. 
Um, but it also will make it so that when you push that button, you're not too sleepy. Because I have a lot of people that say, I don't like pushing the button because it makes me so sleepy or it makes my brain feel funny that I don't feel like myself and I don't like that. So let your nurse or your doctor know if that's the case for you and they can adjust that dose down. It's not the same, it doesn't have to be the same for everyone. And that can just make it so you have a more pleasant experience with a PCA and maybe make it work a little bit better for you. And it's called patient controlled analgesia for a reason. We want you to be in control and to adjust those doses to make it both safe and effective. So uh, this is um, the meat of the issue that I wanted to get at. And this is uh, the same for all drugs. Um, they use a similar curve. This isn't specific for any particular drug. Well, it says for morphine, but this is the same for basically all drugs. And what this first blue line is, is the dose response curve for um, analgesic effect. And for a blood pressure medication, it would be the response to uh, control your blood pressure for um, if you're on insulin, it would be the amount of insulin you need to keep your blood sugar in a good control. So this can be extrapolated to any drug. And the on the y-axis here, you have the effect of the drug. And on the x-axis, we you have the dose. So just for simple numbers, these are not numbers that you'd use for treating pain. But if we say that the low dose is one milligram of morphine, which is an extremely low dose, it doesn't really control pain. But there's really no side effects of that. And you have no side effects. And this red, sorry, the red one is side effects and problems with that drug from getting too much. So if you get a really low dose, um, it, you're not going to control pain, but you're not going to have any side effects either. If you do a, a middle, so this margin of safety line, so this is 50% of people will have a good effect of the drug. So if you say for morphine, we'd say that 50% of people would have a good pain control at this level. And way over here is where 50% of people would have problems with that drug. So that would be the itching, nausea, those types of things, respiratory depression. So if you are somebody who has a, um, a high opiate tolerance or have um, poor response to the pain medication, you are going to be way up here on this, on this response. So you are in the um, 95th percentile or so, let's say, of dose needed to give you good pain control. And if you scoot way down here, at that same 95 percentile, some people, usually the low tolerance people, would actually have side effects from this. And as you go up on your dose, you control the pain of more and more people, but you'd also get side effects for more and more people. And so here at this dose, it would be 50 percent of people would have side effects. So the problem with doing the nurse administered boluses, like the Q4 hour um, boluses or Q2 hour boluses of IV pain medicine, is that in order to control your pain over a longer time period, you need a bigger dose. And that bigger dose means that your plasma level of that medicine is going to be higher, which means that you're going to stray over to this side. And to show that a little bit better, I made up this little um, chart. And this is showing the same thing, but for an individual person instead of a population like the last graph did. So here we're using hydromorphone now instead of morphine. And this is over time. And the way that a PCA works optimally and what, we, um, what I think about in my head as I'm prescribing one is that you have no pain medicine here. This is where you have optimal pain relief, is this line right here. And this one up here is the side effects. So the PCA is meant to maintain the current level of 
drug that's in your system. So the current level of pain medicine. So you'll either have a nurse or a doctor. So after surgery, the anesthesiologist would be bolusing you with pain medicine to get you to a pain relief level for when you get to the PACU. Your PACU nurse would be giving you pain medicine to get you into this pain relief area. And then they'd hand you your button and then you would be able to push this button. So these lines are, um, so it, no one's giving you pain medicine here. So over time, your pain relief goes down. And here it gets to be a level where you think, this isn't quite good enough. So you push your button. And then your level of medicine that you have in your system goes up. You have good pain relief. And then that works for a while. And then as that time goes by and your body metabolizes that drug, you start to have not as good pain relief, and then you push the button again, and you can see it where over time this line would go out, and you would just push that button often enough to make sure that you get good pain relief throughout. And what's nice about this is you have small doses, so you're unlikely to hit the side effect bar, which I have up here, and it's not a solid line for everybody, it's different for everyone, but you could see if this is one dose that a nurse or a doctor would give you because it's a bigger dose because it's supposed to last longer. If I g gave you another one of these right here, you would be in the side effect bar. So you can see where giving these small doses more frequently when you need them can be more effective than giving bigger doses less frequently. And it can be a way to minimize those side effects and keep you comfortable and make you more independent. Um, and I think that those are the main characteristics of a PCA pump. Um, if you have questions, be sure to uh, comment below or send me a message. I'm happy to answer anything. I know I covered that probably not quite as clearly as I wanted, but I tried to cover it um, well enough that it could at least incite questions and I can answer anything specific that you have. Um, Thank you very much, and thanks for listening.